Hi, I'm John David Dalton, and today I'm going to be talking about fearless browser test automation. All right. So, a little bit of background. I am a contributor to Lodash. Um, Lodash is a, before I begin, how many people use Lodash? All right. Arr! How many people use underscore? All right, get out, get out, just right now. <laughs> just. Uh, no, that's okay. You can stay. Uh, I also help and contribute to underscore two. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about browser test automation and what I did with Lodash to, to tackle that. Um, when I created Lodash, one of the things I wanted to do to, do, uh, to separate myself from the competition was to list the browsers I test, um, and that meant testing those browsers. Um, and so when I first released Lodash, I was very... Um, accommodating to testing lots of browsers. I said, I support Chrome 5, and I support Firefox, uh, what is it now, 29 or something. Like, all the ranges, all the browsers. And that meant testing all of those things. Um, and so that took about two days to do. Uh, and we had 38 or 34 releases in that year, uh, which meant a lot of time spent testing. And I, I knew there, there had to be a better way. Um, but before I start, uh, JSConf is a conference of firsts. I started Lodash after JSConf one year, um, and I was inspired by Jen's talk on, on Jort sort, uh, so I'd like to announce that we will be getting Jort by. Uh, it's a, it's a drop-in replacement for Jort sort, but it is faster and more consistent. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, um, you can follow along on some of the, uh, the Q&As of, of uh, the, uh, my testing story at uh, Sauce Labs. They did a blog post uh, where I answer uh, a lot of the questions I'll be talking about today. Uh, so there's the short URL there, bit.ly uh, slash sauce uh, uh, hyphen lodash, with no hyphen on the lodash. All right, manual testing made me do this. Uh, <laughs> it was horrible. It's lots of browsers, it's variations, it's versions, it's virtual machines, and it's time. So I mentioned that I test a lot of browsers. Um, and I'm sure everyone's setup looks like this. So we all have our Chrome browsers, right? <laughs> we, we all have our IEs, we all have our Firefoxes, our Operas, and our Safaris. And I tested on all of those manually, opening up the browser, going to the unit test, running the unit test, doing a drop-down menu to change out the file and the build, and doing that over and over and over and over again. And that just sucked up my weekends. Um, so, so I wanted to automate this. But the problem was, uh, it was intimidating. There wasn't a lot of documentation around browser test automation. Um, I noticed that it seemed to be uh, uh, mysterious and very hard. Uh, in fact, I could not do it. I, I had to ask the, the Twitter sphere uh, for help, and someone actually jumped in and fixed bugs and dependencies of NPM packages um, and to get it to work for me. Uh, and then once they did that, then I was able to kind of uh, refine it and clean it up, and I, I took it on from there. Um, and so I'm going to be covering some of the roadblocks that I ran into uh, uh, getting testing started. So let me go back. All right. If you noticed, I had a lot of virtual machines, too. That eats up my hard drive. This box is basically just good for JavaScript. There's almost no hard drive space left. It's all just VMs. All right. So Lodash tests on five browsers. That's uh, five environments. So it's not just, it's not just Node or, or the browsers. It's Ringo, Rhino, Norwal. I'm, I'm about to do Nashorn, which is like the new Rhino. Um, and I even test on things like Adobe Illustrator. 
but that's not included in my automation. I just manually do that one. Um, there's also builds. So it's not just the monolithic build, because we've had a lot of talks on modules, right? Um, so Lodash supports custom builds. We're one of the most customized libraries out there. So there's the AMD build, there's the common JS build, which is different than the NPM build. Um, and all of these are tested. And they all run in the same unit test. So I have one unit test file, uh, and every single one of these builds can run against that unit test. So I know that each one's covered. Um, and testing it in the browser, it's the same thing. It's not just the monolithic build. It's the AMD build. It's the underscore build. It's the backbone build. It's, it's the, com the compat build. It's the modern build. It's the non-minified version. It's the minified version of each one of these things because bugs creep in to lots of different areas. Um, closure compiler advanced mode uh, likes to think it knows more than you do and will say, hey, this code can never be reached. But engines are buggy and lots of places where code can, should never be reached can get reached if you're doing a feature test. Uh, and so Closure Compiler will like to strip out those feature tests. Um, so I have to put them back in and I have unit tests to make sure that the minified versions work correctly. This says 30 versions. I have since pulled back because even automating it, that's still a crazy amount of browsers. So I follow the jQuery uh, uh, method of this, which is take the current browser and go one back. Um, so I test that except for things like IE, where I still support IE6, um, and Safari, where I support uh, Safari 5. And that's mainly because things like uh, PhantomJS still use ish, five-ish for, for its WebKit. So I, m I make sure that I support that too. OK, so I said there's got to be a better way, and there is, and it's browser test automation. Um, there's a couple of options out there. There's, there's Sauce Labs, which I'll be talking about today, and there's Testling, um, which is a, a different way to do it. Um, just because I'm talking about Sauce Labs doesn't mean it's the one true way. It's the way that I, I went. Um, if, you, if you use uh, Testling, or you use Browser Stack, or you use something else, as long as you're doing test automation, you're in a better place. Uh, so I would encourage anyone to just to, to read up on these different options and pick the one that's right for you. I like Sauce Labs. Um, let's see if I get into that real quick. I might. Because it has a view of, uh, you can do lots of things with your unit tests. So for example, here's, an exa here's, here's my, my, my page layout here for the Sauce Labs. Um, you can go, go along, or uh, uh, play along with me here, uh, and follow along, that is, and go to sauce lab slash u slash lodash to see the recently run unit tests. I ran these tests about 30 minutes ago, so it was a really big chance, because they, there could have been mass fails, there could have been instability in the, the test automation, uh, but in, in a little bit I'll explain why that wasn't the case and why they're all green. Um, You'll notice that it has the name of the test, it has the OS, it has tags with it too. So you can associate with your unit test run keywords. So for example, when I'm testing the compat build and the minified build, it's compat production and it's also the underscore uh, unit test suite. So it says underscore. And so using that on the search session name, I can, I can narrow down tests by the tags in the tests. I can also, uh, you'll see here it has the commit hash there too, so I can look up tests by commit hash. And then of course it has the, the name of the test, so it has things like the underscore test, the backbone tests, and the lodash test. Because lodash tests against underscores unit tests, it also tests against backbone too, to make sure that there's that compatibility there. All right, so to get started, I used Travis CI, uh, QUnit, uh, Sauce Labs supports Jasmine, Mocha, uh, and a few others. It also supports uh, custom uh, uh, unit testing uh, libraries, and I'll, kind of, I'll go into that in a little bit later, too. Um, I, use, uh, I don't use Grunt, but it is optional. Uh, how many people are using Grunt? All right, so if you're using Grunt, there's a really easy way to get browser test automation set up, uh, and I'll talk about that, too. Uh, and then you'll need a Sauce Labs account, um, and that's just really easy. You sign up, you get your account, you get an uh, API key, and that's what you'll need. Okay, so I make Travis CI do all the things. I don't, do, I don't use Grunt in my case because Grunt traditionally has, has used Lodash, too, and I kind of wanted to have this pure dependency stack where I wasn't using anything else that was using me to test myself. Um, so I, I make Grunt do, or, uh, Travis do it, and that looks something like this. 
this massive YML file. Uh, go uh, to uh, my GitHub repo for Lodash, and it's, it's Lodash slash dot Travis YML uh, to see this, this pretty hefty YML file. And what it's doing is it's running each one of these various versions of the build. So it's running PhantomJS, Norwal, um, Rhino, uh, it's running the various builds as well, too. And then somewhere in there, towards the bottom, you'll see the Sauce Labs uh, uh, runs, too. So I, I throw my command in there uh, to uh, call a helper file, which establishes the tunnel, um, uh, sets up the tests, runs the tests, and will actually retry the tests, too. All right, so this is what it looks like on Travis CI when it's actually running the jobs. You'll see it says the name of the browser, the version, and passed. And if there was an issue there, it would say failed and how many. If there was a connection issue, it would say uh, what the connection issue was. It may even give you a link for more information about that issue, uh, too. But when, all, when everything is good, you'll see things like this, where it just says passed. Um, and you'll see there, too, that I have the fancy colors, and that's because chalk, which I mentioned earlier um, here. Oops, it's not there. It's over here somewhere. I use chalk to color that. Again, optional. Uh, what I do now is I, I take it up a notch and I do code coverage too. So not only is it test automation, it's code coverage as well. And I use uh, Istanbul to uh, do a pass over uh, Lodash and then I feed that to coveralls. And what's nice about coveralls, coveralls is kind of a bit beta-ish. Um, but for me, at least with the modular build, so the modularized build is the screenshot that I'm showing here, it can show f module per module, or in this case, like method per method, and show me how much I have coverage for that method. Uh, and I just used that today to find dead code in two of my methods, which was uh, assign and merge. I had a little if statement that was never being hit. And it, it wasn't a coverage gap. It was a usability gap. Like, there's no way to actually get to that chunk of code. So I was able to spot dead code and remove it from uh, my build. And then, of course, that increases the, the coverage uh, percent as well. So this says 90% uh, in this file or that file. Overall, it's tilde 100%. So if you go to the, the actual interface, it says 100%. So I'm rocking about 100% test coverage there. Um, so to, to do this, the NPM depths, this is the one where, where chalk was there. Um, I use chalk. I use a static file server. Uh, this case was ecstatic. Um, I tried a few others, and I'm not a pro at like all things server related. Um, so I found one that worked. Uh, a request, and then sauce tunnel. Now, um, just, a, just a few weeks ago, I would have had to put like an asterisk next to sauce tunnel. Uh, about uh, connection problems and using a very specific patch, which was a roadblock that I had to overcome. But they have since fixed that. So now you just use Sauce Tunnel and everything works. It's using Sauce Connect version 4, um, which is an updated version. Uh, it should be faster, more reliable, uh, all the things. So some of the cool things you can do with browser test automation. Uh, and one of the reasons I use Sauce Labs is because it gives you more control. Uh, I, I did not want to do, uh, I did not want as much control as like WebDriver, so that's like scripting all kinds of things, and I, I did not want that. But I wanted a little bit more control, uh, because one of the things I test is IE compat modes. So you all know that there's, there's compat modes in IE, um, and that they're not exact emulations of their modes. So if you're running IE 11 as IE 8, that's not really IE 8, that's an emulated form of IE 8, it's a compat mode. Um, and there's bugs in the compat mode that don't show up in the normal version. And underscore and Lodash patch uh, issues with that in, its, in the library. And so I need to test that. Um, and with, uh, with Sauce Labs, I can. I basically detect a query string. I set the header for the file, because you, you can set compat modes inside a meta tag, or you can set compat modes uh, with the, H, the HTML header. Uh, for the, the header for the HTML file, and so I, I do it that way. Uh, so I can have the exact same unit test that's running all of my browser tests also run the compat mode tests, uh, too. Uh, what's also nice is concurrent tunnels. So it's not just run one unit test suite, uh, wait for it to complete, start another, start another. That would take forever. Uh, this allows concurrent test, uh, tunnels, so you can have tests uh, running at the same time. Um, there's limits. For the free account, there's like a limit of three. Uh, I upped mine to 10. Um, 
but 10 has been more than I've ever needed, and I do a lot of variations here. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, with all of the builds and the minifieds and all of that. Um, automatic retries. Uh, so this is something I've been working on. Um, it's, it's not available in the Grunt um, plugin yet, but it's, it, what it does is, this, this is running tests from Travis CI. It's opening a tunnel from Travis CI to Sauce Labs and running unit tests. And a lot of weird stuff can happen on the net, like some connections could be dropped, something could be hanging somewhere, causing it to fail, and it's not my fault. It's not, the, it's not my code's fault, it's not failing unit tests, there's a connection issue. Um, and normally that would, that would cause the, the test run to fail, and that would cause my Travis job to fail. And each one of my, tra I have three Travis runs for the, the monolithic build, and that's, each one has like eight Sauce Labs connections, and so that means if one of those eight fail, my entire Travis job fails, and it says my unit tests fail for that. Um, so it's very important that I don't have false positives creeping up, because it could be very chatty and making me always have to double check my work, which is annoying. Um, so what I've added was retries in all the place and all the things. So it does things like uh, QUnit. How many people use QUnit? Ooh, not a lot. I tell you what, I, I use QUnit because it was available at the time um, and because underscore and backbone use it. And I want compatibility with them. Uh, so what I did was I made QUnit work in all the environments that it, it doesn't naturally work in. So I made it work in Node, I made it work in Java, ooh, uh, by, by uh, shimming uh, set timeout, uh, set interval, and clear timeout, and all of those things, and get, got it working there. So I'm, I found this, this this way to make it work, I use it. It's called uh, QUnit Extras, uh, which is the note on the bottom there. And that's my shim for adding uh, things like retries to QUnit. So one of the things that, that bit me with uh, browser test automation is asynchronous tests, anything that relies on set timeout. And so Lodash has debounce and throttle. And I have unit tests that rely on pauses there. And when you're testing in old browsers, those timeouts and those timers have really poor resolution. And there could be things going on in the background that cause them to drift. And when they drift, you get false fails. Uh, so what I've added was qunit.config.async retries. And so you can specify how many times you want an async test to retry before it gives up. And so in my case, it's 10 times. Um, so if any one of those 10 times passes, I, I get a pass from the test. Uh, I don't have a problem with false positives. It's always been false negatives. If the test is going to fail, it's always going to fail. But the, the timer drift could cause false uh, fails every once in a while. So I need to try that. Um, the other thing I've added was retries to jobs. So before I said, hey, there could be a connection issue. And that could cause uh, a job to hang. Um, so I detect that. And if, if a, there's a problem with the job that's not test related, I retry the job. And so that requires um, stopping the job, deleting the job, creating a new job, and continuing on. And if there's a lot of problems with the jobs, it could mean there's a problem with the tunnel. The tunnel connection could be corrupt. And if there's a problem with the tunnel, then I stop all the jobs, remove all the jobs, and then restart the tunnel and continue where I left off. Uh, so when I've done that, I get a super stable uh, te uh, browser test automation. I don't get false fails. I've been tweeting about this recently where I had like 100 runs with no false fails, and then I had two weeks with no false fails. And so I just keep refining that and getting it more and more stable. And I've even added mobile testing, which I'll cover in a bit. Uh, and even that, completely stable. Just I know if it fails, it's unit test related, and it's not just the setup. Uh, tailored platforms. So before I said, hey, I, you can do compat testing, right, uh, for IE. But if I'm doing compat mode testing, that means I'm not interested in Firefox and Chrome and Safari, right, because this is IE compat modes. So you can do things like say, OK, I'm testing uh, IE uh, compat modes. I know I don't need those browsers. Or I'm testing AMD modules, right? So then I know I don't need some old version of Opera that doesn't work with that. So you can tailor based on what you're testing. And so I can, I can detect that by the tags that I assign to things and, only, and make sure that of my browser matrix, I only test the ones that it's relevant to. Um, next. So going into some of the cool, uh, here's an example uh, of the tiny bit of code that is uh, required to set the header for uh, the IE compat mode. And you can see there, if you want to go to my repo, which is uh, lodash 
uh, slash Lodash and then go to test in sauslabs.js, you'll see this in there too. Um, and that actually does the, the sniff for the .html and then sets the header for compat mode. And that's all you do. Um, I'm, I'm not sure you can do that with something like Tesling, which is why I like, I like Sauce Labs. Sauce Labs also allows me to do things like have a screencast of my, my failed test so I can run it and see exactly what errored and when. And what's helpful there is to say, for at least for QUnit, is to say hide passing tests. So it only shows the ones that have failed. Uh, you can actually go a step further and, and tell Sauce Labs which tests have failed, and they'll do a really pretty printout that doesn't require a screencast or anything. Uh, I just haven't done that yet. So. Okay, five minutes. All right, that's awesome. So here's, here's the, I, I always think I'm gonna be short on time, but this is cool. Um, this is uh, an example of filtering uh, platforms here. So I just say, hey, if it's a compat mode, I filter it down to the relevant uh, user agents and browsers. Uh, and this is the secret sauce to doing anything with Sauce Labs. And that was something that I had to kind of find out on my own. It's, it's better documented now, but at the time it wasn't, and that is, if you even have a custom unit testing framework, you just have to set global test results, which is a global variable, uh, to um, your details object. So, and your details object can have a pass and a failed count. And that's the minimum it needs, right? But you can add like an error message too if you want. Um, but that's all you need, it, no matter what unit testing your framework you're, you're using. As soon as you set that global object, it will detect it and then uh, close out that connection for that browser and say, all right, and, and, and report back the results. So the other option, instead of making Travis CI do it, if you've seen the hefty Travis.yml, you're, you're probably thinking, well, that's not for me. Uh, well, I made that for me. Um, for you, you might like the grunt way to do it. And the grunt way to do it is fairly straightforward. Uh, there is a project by Purusharam, uh, a, a MS OpenTech employee. I believe this might be on his own time, though. Uh, and it's called Grunt Sauce Labs. Uh, and this allows you to fairly easily, by configuring a, a config that looks a lot like just a, a regular object, uh, with your, your, the unit testing framework you want to use, some paths, some browser names and versions you want to use, and that's it. It handles a lot of the stuff that I had to stumble along uh, the way uh, for you. In fact, I was really surprised when I started doing research for this that uh, the thing that I came up with looks really close to the thing that they have, except theirs uses Grunt and mine uses Travis CI. Uh, so I would recommend using uh, this, this project uh, for that. Here's an example uh, of just of, of what it would look like, the config. You can see you just specify your browsers, your platform, your version, and maybe some paths in there, and uh, a port. Um, and, and that's really it. This is taken from WinJS, which was recently open sourced. They use uh, the Grunt Sauce Labs as well, uh, and they use QUnit here. Um, and so that's really all you have to do to set up your stuff, which makes it very nice. So some of the things that made me go, hmm, these are more, more of the stumbling blocks. You'll see at the bottom I've crossed out some. I'll cover those in a bit. Um, so I'm not a Ruby dev. I'm JavaScript all the way. Uh, but in order to get this to work for Travis CI, I had to do gem install Travis, uh, mess with encrypted strings. Um, so here, I, I, there was questions like, does secure inside your Travis YML work with multiple variables? Does it environment variables? How does all of that sort out? So the, the basic idea is, is you go Travis encrypt sauce, that capitalized sauce access key, and your access key from your account. Um, and then it, you can put that in your Travis YML uh, with dash secure and whatever that encrypted string is. And so what, what Travis CI does on the back end is take that and actually turn that into the legit environment variable. Uh, the global test results I've already covered, and Android testing was a big pain. And what uh, the problem there was is that I believe it has to deal with HTTP, or I'm sorry, HTML headers, um, uh, and um, headers for JavaScript files. It seems to be very picky about that. So what I was getting in my mobile testing were files that would load 
as valid JavaScript, but only partially load the file and then throw syntax errors, uh, which was f uh, really frustrating to, to solve. So what I do is I, I, I add an on, a window on error handler that detects the error, uh, tells the unit test that it's done running, and reports the error back. And then my retry logic goes, hey, there was an error running this test. Why don't you retry that test? And then I retry it, and hopefully that issue is resolved. It's not a very um, consistent issue, but that mobile testing one, that was really tricky. Um, there's no longer an issue with Sauce Tunnel, so you don't have to worry about that special version. And there's no longer an issue with an undocumented Tunnel ID key. Uh, that was fun to find. Uh, that's been resolved, too. They're, they've just refreshed their documentation and made everything super easy. Um, for more information on their docs, you can go to docs slash rest slash additional config slash connect and get tons and tons of information. This thing is super configurable. The rest API is what I use because I didn't want to deal with uh, a web driver. So I just, I take the URL, I, I post a request with a JSON object, and then I just check it. And I do everything from there. You can delete uh, jobs. You can rename jobs. The list kind of goes on and on and on with how configurable these things are. Uh, so I would say check that out. And I think I'm done. And there is no questions. So that's it. Awesome.